Moving on now, in Cameroon, a Cameroonian citizen who runs a successful printing business says he will vote to maintain the status quo come October when the country goes to the polls. He believes his business has thrived in the current political and economic environment and he wants it to continue under President Paul Beer. When Samuel Long started his business, printing and selling garments 11 years ago, he had 900 US dollars in savings and did the work mostly by hand. Now his brand, Diedo Boy, makes about 1,500 US dollars a month. It's been more than 11 years since I launched my business and started printing my t-shirts. Printing shirts has evolved because it was a little complicated before because I did not have certain machines in order to increase production. Long says he will vote for President Paul Bia to stay in power because his business has thrived in the current political and economic environment and he believes with stability it can grow. President Bia, one of Africa's longest seven leaders, is seeking a seventh term in elections scheduled for October the 7th. The 85-year-old came into power in 1982 and his bid for presidency after scrapping term limits from the Constitution in 2008 prompted deadly riots. Mr. Long says he is eager to see what more the president can do for the country. I want the current president to stay in power, especially when it comes to development. He has already started certain projects that he should oversee until the end. For me, he is a president I will vote for because he has to finish what he started. Cameroon currently ranks 153rd on the UN Human Development Index with an average life expectancy at 56. The economy has been sluggish because of low prices for its main export oil and cocoa and failing crude oil production. Things were made worse by a shutdown of the economy in its western Anglophone region, which before a crackdown on violence in 2016 was becoming a hub for startup tech businesses. In Ethiopia, five people have been charged with terrorism in connection with what prosecutors say was an attempt to kill Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Prosecutors allege the plot was masterminded by an Ethiopian woman based in Kenya. They further stated that the attack was carried out by members of the country's largest ethnic group, the Oromo, because they believed Mr. Abiy would not act in their interest, even though he is from the Oromo group. Two people were killed and more than 100 injured in a grenade attack in June at a rally in the capital in support of the Prime Minister. In South Africa, Deputy Mayor of Cape Town has announced that the restrictions on water use for local residents will now be relaxed. Mr Ian Nielsen says the water restrictions will loosen a little beginning from October 1st and residents will now be able to use 70 litres instead of 50 per day. The restrictions might be further relaxed by the end of October, raising the limited quota to 87 or 100 litres per day. A severe drought began in 2015 in the West Cape province, resulting in water shortages, putting Cape Town City under a level 3 residential water restriction since the beginning of 2016. Essentially what has happened over these years, we first of all within the water uh, distribution system done a lot of work and reduced all the leaks and, and pipe breaks and so on. Uh, and on that basis have reduced the amount of water lost quite substantially. Uh, we also put pressure reduction and many other things which resulted in, in, in a great saving of, of uh, just wasted water. One of the key lessons of this drought is that we should not into the future only rely on what we call surface water supplies, which is the rainfall, the runoff, the dams. But we must diversify our water supply system uh, so we are looking, we already started now with uh, exploration of groundwater supplies uh, which we think will give us a reasonable amount of, of uh, additional supply. 
also water reuse, uh, which we'd only done uh, to, a, to a marginal extent previously. Uh, we're now looking to increase that quite substantially uh, by treating uh, our wastewater to, to full potable standards, uh, but then also uh, to, to explore some a large-scale desalination plant. Key workers in Kenya have filed a case against the multinational company Unilever in the United Kingdom's Supreme Court. They accused the company for alleged failing, allegedly failing to protect them during the 20, 2007 post-election violence in which over 1,000 people were killed. According to court documents, seven workers were killed and 56 women were raped in the ethnic violence. In a letter to Unilever CEO Paul Polman, the workers say local management put workers at risk by ignoring death threats reported by employees, including those from co-workers. However, the UK Dutch company denies the claim. Still to come on the programme, our Africa Tech segment takes a look at offline technology for low and middle income countries. Please stay with us. <laughs> 